For us to be able to build one of our upcoming projects we will need plenty of clamps and the problem is we only have two old ones and if we decided to purchase the clamps we would need we would spend a couple of hundred euros. So to save some money we will use our offcuts, a bunch of M8 threaded rods and different types of M8 nuts to make plywood clamps using our CNC router and other tools in our workshop. And of course to see if the clamps are any good we will also need to do some testing. So the first task was coming up with the clamp design. Since we wanted to make the clamps using only plywood and standard items available in most home supply shops, coming up with a good design wasn't that simple. The bar and the fixed jaw were easy to design, but the biggest challenge was to figure out the best way to make the screw and the handle. And after a lot of sketching on paper and in Fusion 360, I came up with a nice looking design. However, I had concerns if the clamp bar was big enough for the clamps to be sturdy and durable. And the only way to test that was by making the clamps. So I loaded an offcut on the CNC router and cut all the necessary plywood components for the clamp. The CNC operations took only around 6 minutes and after the cuts were done I could remove the components from the work surface. Since the first clamp was solely for testing how well the design would perform I didn't bother trimming the component edges and sanding and went straight to the assembling. The first task was gluing the movable jaw parts together. To position the components correctly, I added 6mm doubles in each of the holes we made on the CNC router. After gluing the moving jaw, I had to remove the support tabs from the small components. And then I could glue the handle parts together. I used an M8 screw to help me align all the holes. It will be helpful when attaching the handle to the threaded rod. Speaking of which, I had to cut a 150mm long piece of the M8 rod. So I used some of our workbench attachments to secure the rod, did some measurements and made the cut. And after chamfering the edges of the rod, I could attach self-fixating nut at one end of the threaded rod. After the nut was in place, I glued pad components together, leaving the nut between them. It will ensure the pad will adjust to your workpiece when using the clamps. By this time the glue for movable jaws had already set and I could cut off the excess towel lengths. After measuring and marking a place for the screw hole, I used a 3mm drill bit to make a pilot hole in the jaw component. After I used an 8mm drill bit to drill through the part. To ensure the hole was perpendicular to the workpiece, I used a small plywood offcut which served as a guide. Then I had to use a 9mm drill bit to expand the hole for the T-nut and the T-nut required some hammering to get into place. The moving jaw was done. I could install the screw and attach the handle. I used flange nuts to secure the handle components in place. Then I could attach the small jaw component to the bar and install the moving jaw. With that, the test clamp was done and it looked astonishing. But there was a problem. It didn't work. When tightening the screw, the moving jaw would slide down the bar so it was impossible to clamp things together. I needed more friction between the bar and the sliding jaw. Regular clamps have these tiny cuts in the bar that prevents the moving jaw from sliding. But it would be challenging to make similar cuts on the CNC router without ruining the visual appearance of the clamps. I had an idea to fix this issue. I just had to remake the moving jaw. So I quickly cut the new jaw components on the CNC router. Then I cut a strip of sandpaper that was the same width as the plywood thickness and then I glued the sandpaper strips to the surfaces that interacts with the clamp's bar. Hopefully the sandpaper would add enough friction between the jaw and the bar when clamping. After the sandpaper was in place I could glue the moving jaw components together, cut off the excess dowels and drill the hole for the screw. Before attaching the T-nut I wanted to test if the jaw would slide along the bar when applying a little bit of pressure and it didn't. This was looking promising, so I decided to trim the edges of the jaw and it was time to remove the handle from the first jaw and reattach it to the one we just built and the take two of the clamps was done. And the best thing was, this time the moving jaw didn't seem to be sliding when tightening the screw. So as the first test we had to glue together two smaller size offcuts. As you probably know when gluing workpieces together the main task for the clamps is squeezing out the excess glue between the parts to ensure the best quality glue up and the plywood clamps seem to be working just fine. After the glue up test 
we had to test how the clamp bar would act when tightening the screw when the jaws are open wider. To do so I used the box attachment on our pegboard wall and to my surprise the clamps performed quite well. The 9mm bar did bend a little bit. It was most noticeable when looking from the side of the clamp. The bar is under a lot of pressure and we shouldn't forget that it's made out of 9mm plywood. I think if we used a 12mm sheet when making a bar component, the clamps would be more durable and resistant to bends like these. We had to test out this theory, so I made another clamp using the 12mm ply for the bar component and surely the clamps didn't bend as much. At this point I was confident the clamps would perform well, so I made some more. By the way, if you would like to make clamps like these for your workshop, you can get the CNC files for them at aribobox.com. Anyway, since our next project will require larger size clamps, I had to make those as well. To make these, I used 18mm plywood for the bars and a 9mm ply for the sides of the jaw. I had to make the bar a little bit wider to ensure the clamps wouldn't bend when clamping larger projects. But other than that, the components were more or less the same as the ones for the smaller clamps. And the large clamps looked nice and performed well. However, the ultimate test for these clamps will be when building our next project. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.